Hi, with this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of uh, random processes. So let's talk this over for a little bit and, and uh, um, some of the characteristics of these things. So the idea is we're going to start with a family of random variables. So you could think about, I've got this uh, you know, environmental load on my building or, or some other quantity that's varying in time that I'm interested in. And I could think about having a set of random variables. You know, if, if x is the quantity I'm interested in, I could have that, that x at time t1, and x at time t2, and x at time three, t3, and so on. And so I could just list out a whole bunch of in instances in time that I'm interested in the value of this um, process. And then I could have uh, probability distributions at any point in time, and joint distributions at all these points in time. And what we'll do is we'll just let, let ourselves go to um, you know, a, a, an infinite range of, of index values in, in general, or a continuously varying range. And instead of listing out explicitly all those instances in time that we're in, we'd like to study, um, we're going to just study um, the, the process as a continuously varying, um, uh, as a function of a continuously varying parameter. Okay, so, so these would be random variables. And um, then we're going to just, when we go to these curly brackets, we're just going to talk about the random process. As a, as a function of time rather than specifying an individual time, okay? And there's a, you know, we could, we could use measure theory to kind of give a general characterization of this, but if we don't want to um, go to measure theory, we have to make distinctions between continuous and discrete variables, okay? So we, we did this for random variables. We have continuous random variables, discrete random variables. We're gonna do the same thing for the uh, random process. And um, there's two, two um, quantities of interest here now. All right, so I've got my random, the random variable x at some point in time t, at a specific point in time t. That could be a continuous random variable or a discrete random variable. And then this parameter t, um, so most of the time with, with these uh, stochastic processes, we're going to think about t as time, um, which is continuously varying. But it could be a, um, we could use a discrete parameter in here as well. Um, and so we end up, when we've got the two combinations for the value that the process takes, and the two combinations for the, um, the parameter, We've got four different types of random processes that we could spell out here, okay? And so um, let's, let's just kind of think through very briefly what, what those could look like. So we could think about you know, each class, um, when we start class, what's the temperature outside, right? And so in this case, um, we're gonna have kind of time being um, the, the class number, or the index being the class number. And we'll have kind of class one, class two, class three, and so on. And then the, the x of t would be the temperature. And so at the start of class one, you know, the temperature could be here, and then here, and here, and, and so on. And so we've got a discrete parameter, class number, and we have a continuous temperature. Um, I guess I could leave off the parentheses. So we've got a discrete parameter and a continuous uh, x. All right. So another example we could think about is what's the ground acceleration during an earthquake? All right. So I've got t is, is time and x of t is acceleration. And you know, if we look at recordings of ground acceleration, I can do better than that. They look something like maybe something like that in cartoon form. And I don't have to pick up my pen to draw that, right? So my, my time is continuously varying. Unlike the previous case where I had to pick up my pen to, to make some dots. And that acceleration is also continuous. Okay, so that's a continuous, continuous case. Um, if we think about the number of students attending the class each day, um, so now we've got t, which is a class number again. And we've got x of t, which is number of students. So 
So the class number is going to go one, two, three, and so on. And the number of students could be you know, zero, one, two, and so on. And so at each class number, um, we're going to have a discrete number of students, and we'll have to have some sort of rule of how many students are, or, or you know, how much participation counts as attending. But if you showed up, you know, we might have some process that looks like this, right? And so um, here now I've got a discrete parameter for the class number, and I also have a discrete x for the number of students. So that's the discrete discrete case. Um, and this is still a stochastic process, right? I could still talk about probability distributions of x at a, at a set of um, t values. OK, and then a fourth example, we could think about um, the number of forest fires in California at some point in time. So t is time again, in this case. And x of t is the number of uh, wildfires. And so we might uh, have like have some zeros during some parts of the year, and then they could they could pick up, and maybe we have several ignitions, uh, and we get to a higher value, and then one gets extinguished, and then a couple more start, and so on. So in this case, I have t time on the x-axis is continuous. So at any instant in time, I can evaluate this process. And the, but the number of wildfires, the x of t, is discrete. Right? So there's, there's only integer values of numbers of wildfires. OK? So there's four different examples over the previous four slides uh, showing all four combinations of discrete and continuous parameters and x's. All right? Um, for a lot of our stochastic processes, we'll do t, t, t is time um, continuously varying. And then the, um, the x could be discrete or continuous. We'll, we'll do some examples with both of those in the class. Um, but just to show that there is a full set of um, all four combinations that are possible. All right, um, so moving forward, so th those are kind of r random processes. I've, I've said that you know, we're going to do primarily um, studies of processes that vary as a function of time. And in this class, we're going to refer to those processes specifically as stochastic processes. So um, generally, I would say stochastic and random get kind of used interchangeably. So if I talk about a stochastic problem or something like that, it just means there's, there's randomness in it. Um, but we're going to use stochastic process in this class specifically to refer to these time varying processes, um, which is the primary case that, that we'll think about in this class. And so it makes sense to kind of call that out specifically with a, with a special name. Um, OK, let's see. Um, well, yeah, why don't, we, why don't we pause there and I'll pick up with a follow-up video.